Hello hackers, welcome back to Pwn College. Today we're talking about processes and threads. Uh, this is of course in the context of race conditions, but the um, general information is quite useful uh, in, in your journey of computer science. All right, let's talk about mostly threads. But let's start with processes. Um, so far in this class, we talked about processes. Uh, a process is what you've been dealing with this whole time um, when you start uh, up a program, when you launch a program, it gets loaded into memory um, as a process and gets executed. Processes have their own virtual memory. This has the stack, the heap, the binary, all sorts of good stuff. Um, it has uh, its own registers. Um, it has uh, its own file descriptors, uh, a process ID, and then various security properties, right? A user ID, a group ID, set comp rules, and you've messed around with all of these um, things so far in the course. Well, this isn't the reality, actually. The reality is that uh, processes are made up of one or more threads, and the threads within a process share the virtual memory um, and file descriptors and so forth, but they all have their own registers, uh, or rather their own register uh, context. When they run, get scheduled on a CPU to run, they have their, their own registers that they don't share with other threads. Um, they have their own stack. Now they can access each other's stacks if they were crazy and, and doing that for some reason, um, because they're all in the same virtual memory, but they are in different places in the virtual memory. They have um, their own thread ID. Uh, the main thread has the same thread ID as the process ID, the PID of the process, but the other threads all have their own thread IDs. And actually they have their own security properties. Their user ID, their group ID, set comp rules are actually per thread, which is pretty incredible. Um, and when you start a process, of course, it has its main thread. And then as you spin up other threads in that process, uh, the process will have multiple kind of sibling threads. All right, um, how do we create threads? Well, uh, there are several different high level libraries that um, you should probably use if you want to create a thread. Um, an example is a uh, pthread. It's actually very simple. Um, you call pthread create, uh, give it somewhere to store a resulting um, thread structure and give it a function to run and an argument to run it with. Super simple, almost as simple as a function call. Um, and it, basically runs that function you provide with the argument you provide in a new thread. Um, so this uh, program will create two threads. Each thread will print out its details. The main thread will print out its details and then it will do p thread join. Well, this simply just waits for this thread to terminate. This waits for this thread to terminate and um, everything is good. Now keep in mind, these are individual threads. They are kind of like processes light. In reality, they are basically processes that share a bunch of information as we'll talk um, about in a second. So let's take a quick look. Uh, here I implemented that program. Uh oh, hold on, technical issues. All right, we are back. Um, so here we have the uh, thread, um, that thread implementation basically, uh, creating two child threads. And then of course we have our main thread. Um, let's compile it. Of course to compile it, we need to link it against the pthread library. This is a non, or it is a standard library, but it's not libc, so it's not automatically linked in. Of course there's uh, as usual, a bunch of warnings. If we run, we spin up two threads and then the main thread prints out its information and each thread prints out in each its information. Now, check it out. We um, spun up thread one first and then we spun up thread two. But in our printout, thread two gets printed first and thread one gets printed second. Actually, if you run this several times, there'll be lots of different configurations. So here, thread one actually printed before the main thread. Uh, here, thread two printed first. Execution order between threads is not guaranteed unless you explicitly control it. 
Um, that is a, a actually the same as execution order between processes. And as we discussed in uh, earlier in the module, of course, that can be non-deterministic. So you have to be very careful. And of course, bugs arise because of uh, this non-deterministic execution order. All right. So um, let's roll forward. Um, can we go lower? So we looked at how to create threads using pthread. Can we create threads? Uh, obviously, pthread is a library. It's not a system call. So what happens under the hood? Well, under the hood, there's a system called call system call called clone. Clone is the successor of fork, essentially. It is fork um, with a lot more power, a lot more finesse. It allows you to create uh, child processes and carefully control what is shared between the parent and the child. In this specific uh, case, this is the clone system call that pthread create uses. Um, I will actually S trace this just to prove it to you. Here is this clone. That's the clone for thread two. This is the clone for thread one. These are the various options passed to clone that uh, pthread create uses to create threads. You can of course man clone to get all of the information on what all of these different options do and there's quite a lot. I'll go through some common ones just for your information. It's good stuff to know. Um, essentially, we, uh, the, the important part here is the flags. Um, first flag clone VM means uh, we clone the virtual memory space between the parent and child. This is uh, different than with fork. With fork, the child gets a copy of the parent's memory space. Um, with clone VM on clone, the parent and child will have the same memory space. So if uh, the parent maps a page, it'll be available to the child and vice versa. With fork, of course, that's not the case. Um, clone file system uh, is the same, uh, but for file systems. So with clone FS, if the parent does a CH root, it'll affect the child, right? It'll uh, One thread will affect the other threads. Um, clone files is the same, but with file descriptors. Clone signal handlers is the same, but with signal handlers, clone thread tells clone that, hey, this is going to be a thread. The new um, uh, child will be a thread of the parent. Um, clone uh, semaphore information. Uh, we'll talk about what semaphores are in a bit here. Um, and uh, cloning um, uh, these options basically do record. Well, this option sets up an area in memory that is um, storage specifically created for the thread to use. It's called thread local storage. Um, different threads, even in the same process, will have a different thread local storage. Um, it's very useful to uh, store uh, kind of global, but still thread specific uh, information, thread specific information. And this basically says um, when the uh, uh, um, um, thread is created, store the, the thread ID. When the thread is uh, done, clear it out from memory. It's record keeping um, really for lib uh, pthread and similar libraries uh, that wrap around clone. And then some addresses on where to store information. Another important thing, this child stack. Um, this is where the new stack for that thread. I mentioned threads have their own stack because they need to, of course, be able to execute their own functions and so forth. All those things go on the stack. They're not going to clobber each other, so they get a new one. And this is where that stack is. If we actually jump back and do um, look at our S trace, right before this clone, there's an M map and an M protect. Uh, the M map maps uh, some uh, an extra stack in memory and gets mapped at this location. And that location, of course, gets passed, um, or at least a location within that page gets passed in as the child stack. Um, and then that location is uh, protected as readable and writable. 
as a stack should be. So uh, each thread gets its own stack created for it and then assigned uh, using that clone system call. Um, very cool stuff. Um, I'll mention that clone can do other stuff um, such as uh, starting or uh, providing capabilities that are required for uh, containerization using, for example, clone new NS, which will create a new namespace. So then you can uh, namespace the, the child uh, into a Docker container, for example. All right. Um, interesting thing while we're talking on the low level, there are some discrepancies between the libc functions you know and love and the system calls that they represent. And this has to do a lot with threading, right? So a couple of examples that we'll run into, um, there is uh, the setting of certain security processes, such as set UID, right? So let's take a look at um, um, another example here. I created another uh, pthread, uh, pthread, another, sorry, another uh, file that uses pthread. Um, hold on. There's a confusing done parameter here that shouldn't be there. All right. So this is our uh, example file. Um, we create two threads as before, but here the first thread will set a UID of 1000, right? What this does, even though Linux individually tracks, as I said before, um, the user ID of um, every thread and the group ID and other security properties, the standard called the POSIX standard, the portable system, my mind's drawing a blank. You can look up what POSIX stands for online. Um, the POSIX standard basically says that set UID will set the user ID of all threads in a process. Uh, so if you use set UID, the library function, and we compile this, and we execute it, let's say as root, so that set UID can function. We see we execute it as root, but it set all of the threads to UID 1000. Oops. Um, if we instead comment this out and use the raw syscall, syscall 105 is the system call for set UID. And of course, 1000 is our um, ID that we want to set to compile that and run it. And you'll see that only the user ID of that thread was set. So be careful. There's this con um, 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 discrepancy and it can uh, have security implications, obviously, because certain threads won't have uh, privileges that are dropped. Um, Real quick, how does uh, libc uh, change the UID of all the threads? Let's take a look. So again, we run it. It all it goes sets all of the UIDs of all the threads in the process. If we S trace it, there's some crazy stuff. There's this signal sig rt one that gets. Um, uh, that gets triggered on every thread in the process. And that's how libc kind of communicates between threads and uh, um, sets all of the user IDs. All right, a similar discrepancy actually exists in exit. Uh, if you call exit um, in, in libc, it'll actually call the exit group system call and kill all of the pro threads in your process. Anything that was cloned, I believe, with clone thread. Um, but if you use the exit system call directly, again, using syscall directly, um, it'll only terminate the caller thread. 
And actually, that is how threads terminate in, in you know, even when you're using pthread when that function returns. Um, all right. Um, let's talk about uh, thread termination while we're on that topic. Um, threads are often long running, right? So uh, common practice for long running threads is to communicate using global variables. Um, uh, this uh, is an example. Let me show you how we might do this. So I implemented this pthread loop that C. It's an example using uh, that where every thread will loop and every second print out its thread information. And the main thread will wait for me to press enter and set a global variable called done that every thread is checking. This is a common um, maybe anti-pattern, but a common uh, way that threads are handled uh, in definitely, you know, the sort of uh, beginner threading code. Um, they'll keep running until some global state says that they are done, and this global state can be touched by other threads. Uh, let me show you what this looks like. All right, um, we compiled it. This keeps running. And then when I hit enter, boom, they're done. All right, now the interesting thing here is uh, that in this case, just one thread is uh, touching this done variable. But you can imagine if multiple threads are sharing a global state and multiple threads whose execution scheduling is non-deterministic are reading from and writing to that global state, then you have a very similar problem to the file system case. You just created a shared resource that multiple badly synchronized um, processes essentially, or threads in this case, which are basically processes that share a bunch of resources uh, can touch all at once. Of course, next we look into how this can be abused.